Hello viewers, I'm Das Lucas and welcome to my Civilization 6 Beginner's Guide, part 8 I think, I lost count, well I've gone higher than 5 so I've definitely lost count somewhere, part whatever this is, welcome to my Beginner's Guide, or as we are continuing to play the game it will start becoming a more intermediate Beginner's Guide, most Beginner's Guide could be argued that it's like here's the start of the game go nuts, but me, I'm going to walk you through the whole game. Or at least until I win. Whichever one comes first. When we left off, I was talking about amenities. I've taken a couple of turns since then. I've got my little camp on my truffles that boosted my amenities. Rome no longer has a problem. As you can see, they have all the amenities they need. They are content. I've also started Shadet on the production of an entertainment district. That will help me. I need to discover... In Interrogation? Yeah, interrogate the... Sh <laughs> interrogate the cocoa. No, irrigation. So that I can get the cocoa as a luxury. But for now, I'm just pretty much just consolidating my empire. Preparing some things. I'm making sure that Rome has the barracks needed for the terracotta army. I would normally heavily advise planning your wonders well ahead. Beelining for them as early as possible and getting them as early as possible. But the whole intrinsic idea. I could show you the ones that I intend to build as Rome but that would require a separate video. It would be much like every Civ technically needs a separate video because every Civ has their own niches and uh, methods of how to win the game really. Each victory type would need its own guy because they're all hell of a lot different. But for now we'll just keep it simple. We'll just get you playing the game. Don't want to run before we can walk as they say. Now I've got 12 turns until that construction finishes, finishes. However, I can build a water mill and speed that up. I'm going to use this builder to create a mine because I want some extra production for Shadet to help speed up this production of the entertainment district. Just make sure the citizens are actually on places that make sense. You'll be surprised how often they go off and essentially just go somewhere that doesn't make sense. If you, um, for the most part, it's all visual. If you see the yield gains where it's like three bits of food, that's three food. Two bits of gold, that's two gold. If you see great big ones like this, that essentially means it has gone above four. Um, it says five gold there, obviously, but it won't get any bigger. It'll just stay that size and it'll be five. At least I haven't noticed it getting any bigger. That's what she said. Ha! Ah! Oh, I'm bad at jokes, I'm sorry. Um, My cities are so close. I don't even know where you are! Oh, volcanic eruption. Mount Etna's blown her lid again. Now, is that a real news flash or <laughs> in game? Who knows? All I know is Mount Enter is still active. So, we've got one more build left with this builder. Where to build with this builder? That's suggesting a farm, that's suggesting a mine. I reckon neither. Let's go get that deer for Ruckadep. Warriors on all the outskirt locations around my empire. They'll spot any incoming barbarians and hostiles. Oh, there's my, one of my other builders. It's going to build a quarry. That'll boost production quite a lot in that city. Aha, walls in racket debt. That's nice. Ba -ba -dum -bum -ba -ba -dum. Right. Still struggling with amenities, but the best way to get amenities would to be build somewhere where there's more. So with that in mind, I'm going to... Hmm. But I normally wait until Magnus has his upgrade before I build a settler. Um... Past my first city, I should say. I normally have to build the first city without the upgrade. But 
because I don't really mind about the amount of population at the moment because of my amenities problem. Um, I'm just going to let them go down for now. I will show you Settler Spam. I'll probably have to show you Settler Spam in a different video actually because of how this has unfolded. But it's going to be part 9 before I'm actually in a position to show you, the viewers, how to actually found a city. Because I just went straight in on the wall side. It should be known as the Warmonger's Guide to Civilization 6. There we go, get some deer. Oh dear. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry about my jokes. Yay, your knowledge of construction. Oh man, one. Right, let's get another builder out. And you... Build another quarry. Oh. Om nom nom. You up there on that guard. It's going good. I'm going to actually let that builder be produced before I the build the terracotta rocks rally. of the universe are fire, water, gravel, and vinyl. Nope, I don't know either. Uh, irrigation. Like so. Ah, oh, scout. Attack, attack, attack. Just let my warriors deal with the barbs. Don't know why you're coming towards me. Phoenicia's right there. Attack them. Get rid of them. I heard them say bad things about your mother. I'd go get them if I were you. Yeah, that's right. You go get them. Unfortunately, little reg exclamation marks are coming for me. Just going to have to move her into such a place where I can get them first. Ah, archers! Thousands have lived without love. But not one, not one without, water. without water. Get the archers, get the archers. Stop that archer now! Ah, there's the scout. Okay, what are we uh, going on to now? Um, right, my gold situation's on plus 16, but I can't leave it on one um, maintenance drop per unit. That becomes counterintuitive after so long. Ba ba ba. Don't really need harbours and stuff yet. So astrology's out. I'd say the thing to aim for after this would be mathematics, apprenticeship, um, education, sort of, you know, obviously keep your military tracks down here up a bit, but these are, particularly apprenticeship, apprenticeship is like a, a milestone. Uh, when you get the industrial zones, pretty much all your cities are going to end up with them, or at least mine do, and they just help you produce things a hell of a lot quicker. They also get adjacency from aqueducts and baths, Canals and dams, and I'm gonna have a, a few, fair few of them. <laughs> I'm gonna have a dam on this floodable river here. Again, this is something that I plan well into the future. Um, I might have mentioned the use of map tax, map tax in previous videos. Don't be afraid to use them. I'm just not. Otherwise, my entire game will just be cluttered, and you'll be like, "What's that mean? What's that mean? Why is that there?" and it's a beginner's guide, it's not an advanced guide. We're teaching you the game here, not how to perfect your game. That takes years of practice, and even I'm not perfect, as that siege on Rakadet showed. Uh, for now, though, currency's probably a good shout. Maybe get a commercial hub going. Now, for Rome, Terracotta Army time. Now, the Terracotta Army, the reason it's good for Rome, all current units gain a promotion level, all archaeologists from the owner may enter foreign lands without open borders, that helps with culture. Um, just specialise in archaeological museums in your culture zones. Must be built on flat, well, theatre districts, not culture zones. Why do I keep calling things the wrong name? Oh well. How to confuse people, 101. Must be built on flat grassland or plains adjacent to an camp in the district with barracks or stable. Also gives me one plus, plus one great general per turn. Point. 
Jesus. I muffed that, muffed that up, didn't I? Uh, oh well. Now, for me, when building a wonder, the first thing I'm going to think about is the fact that I am inevitably going to want to build a theatre district somewhere near it. So, where would that theatre district be best to go? Now, I've got my encampment there. It can be built on those two tiles or there do those two tiles. I have to purchase those tiles, but 115 out of 543 isn't too much of a biggie. I've just got a basically plan where the theatre district would go and make sure it's at its best place. Now, the way I'm thinking is Terracotta Army there, theatre district there, Chichen Itza there. That would also build, um, boost the theatre district. And then other things can be produced down here, like a dam there, an industrial thing there, because rem you remember I said it gets bonus from a dam. There we go. I'm thinking that would be best, so let's roll with it. There goes the Terracotta Army. 24 turns to produce. Just go get myself a lumber mill going. That'll give me some extra production. Don't kill my warriors! They're too beautiful to die. If I move you out of range and then upgrade you, I'll get half my health back. Put the tortoise promotion on and you can't hit me too hard. Haha! -ha. Check and mate. Uh, right, Rakadet. Oh, plus four! Now you see. This is actually one of the only times that I will actually say, harvest a resource. I'm going to harvest those sheep, and I'm going to pit a pus for campus there. The long-term loss of that sheep will be made up by the spectacular campus that I'll build there. My science will be a thing of beauty after that. So for now, can we get another builder out? Uh, I've got one over there, obviously. Yeah, it probably makes sense to get another builder out. Settlers! Right! Now I introduce you to what's known as Settler View. Now, green spots you can build in. Dark green is where you got fresh water. When you got fresh water, it gives you more base housing, plus three. Lighter green, it means you've got sort of fresh water. It's salt water. It's usually ocean tiles. So you get plus one. These grey ones, no fresh water, you get bugger all. However, aqueducts and granaries make up for that. However, you can't use them in conjunction with a bonus. They they get less of a bonus in fresh water tiles, um, baths and aqueducts and granaries and stuff. But that's for later. Uh, for me, I've got to decide where to build. Now, you do get these little pop-ups, advisor says, advisor says. Now, the advisor, in my eyes, is not always correct. The prime example in this case would be the fact that they want me to build on a floodable river, which would flood and kill my city. They would kill people in the city. Um, I would also say that that's a bad place because it's too close to Rakadet and will end up fighting over the same sort of tiles along here. So I'd want to build it one over. The bonus of building it one over is I build it on a river mouth, on a hill, which gives me some extra production. I do have to lose the rainforest, but that's no biggie. And it can act as a city, um, an ocean city, a harbour city, whatever city you want to call it. The other option would be, as I might have pointed out earlier in the game, and it's actually got an advisor says here, near the iron mine. Only problem with that is it's right next to Mount Etna. Um, for me, I don't want Phoenicia, and this is another thing to consider, I don't want Phoenicia building up here. They've been kept at bay at the moment by the barbarians, but I want them to stay below this line. And it still has iron there. So with that in mind, I'm going to send my settler there. Now, only a fool would send a settler out unescorted. I say only a fool because the AI do it all the time and I like sniping them. Now, I don't want a barbarian popping up and going, ooh, nice settler, I'll have that. So I'm just going to attach my archer to it with that button. Nice and simple. And off they go. See you in four turns. 
just keep building. Why are you so mean? I am actually going to get rid of that barb encampment now. They've, they've bullied Phoenicia long enough. I think I'm just going to come in and bully Phoenicia. <laughs> Um, lumber mine plus two production. That has boosted my terracotta army from 22 to 19. Let's just check the citizens are in the right place and not being plonkers. Uh, more or less. Yeah, can't complain. Can't ultimately complain. I can still complain. You're not in the right place. Well. Do 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 Now something I want to show you but I can't quite do it yet because it's just out of range. When a tile has for instance damage by that sometimes they also get boosted. Now if you bear in mind that that's actually a planes tile and a planes tile's usual yield is one food and one production and that's got two food Basically, it means it's been irrigated by the volcano. So it's not all bad to be near a volcano. You just don't want it exploding in your face. You don't want a Vesuvius on your hands. I mean, they say they want food, but they really don't. I just think they're being fat. One thing farms do give you, however, is 0.5 housing. So two farms, extra housing. Extra housing, more civilians. More civilians, more production. you got to uh, strike a balance because if you run out of amenities, those extra civilians mean nothing. Uh, is there a housing thing here? Yep. Housing multiplier, one. Nice food supplies. Don't really look too much at this, I just... I inherently know what's going on and where. Loyalty, religion, power! That's for later. And in goes my warriors. There we go, another barb camp dealt with. You also get 50 gold per encampment destroyed, so it's nothing to sniff at, really. I just like the way they were bullying Phoenicia. Basically made them go in that direction instead of this direction. Perfectamundo. Oh, go away! Right. I'm afraid we're going to have to break up. Get him, archers. It was critical I'd done that because I have a funny feeling that that scout was about to... Set that stone mine on fire. It's a quarry, Luke. Yes, I know it's a quarry. Shut up. Put it myself now. Um, and I'm going to stick a second farm there just for the extra housing. Also because you also get a little bit of a bonus when you chain farms together. So if I chain just, just farmland. Everywhere. You get some farmland. You get some farmland. Everybody gets some farmland. Wonder has been built. The pyramids. Money. If it does not bring you happiness, will at least help you be miserable in comfort. Yep, can confirm. Invincibility lies in the defence. The possibility of victory in the attack. Defensive tactics. An armored player has finished building the World Wonder pyramids. Choose research. I'm going to go down engineering, get some siege weapons, but also be in a position to build baths literally everywhere. I'm going to go down drama and poetry. Governor titles. This is where I give my promotion to Magnus and where we begin settler spam. Settlers trained in a city do not consume a population. So, 
I'm going to leave him in Rome because once Rome is done with the Terracotta army, it is going to settler spam like mad. You stay there. You build a city. The citizens of Antium adjust to their new home and keep a wary eye on the nearby river. Just so you know, I've actually built outside the floodable area. So although I can still be damaged, I'm not sure. Disaster Insensity 2. Uh, it won't be as extreme. I am near Phoenicia, however, so the first thing I want to build is walls. <laughs> um, and I think with the settling of that, and my envoy that I'm about to put in Buenos Aires, and this shows what happens when you become Caesarian or Suzerain. Don't know why I keep calling it Caesarian. That's a. Uh, I don't know. Buenos Aires, I'm Suzerain. Your bonus resources behave like luxury resources. Now, this should help my amenities immensely. Providing one amenity per type. What do I have? I have some copper. I have some sheep. I have some maize, which is amazing. And I have some stone. So, if I wait for ending this until the next turn... Uh, you can go back to rack debt. Yes, yes. Tech boosted on sailing because I built next to a coast. Next turn. And you see all the little red tents have just disappeared because I've got enough amenities for all my cities. And not just that, I've just built my entertainment district. So, my amenity problems are now a thing of the past. As you can see, everyone has more than they need now. So, with that, viewers, it's time to end this part. Hopefully you continue following my beginner's guide as we advance through the ages. But for now, I'm Das Lucas, signing off.